This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. And let me say this to every mother. If you have dedicated your children to the Lord, you should not be carrying that care to bed every night. God got them. I said, if you've dedicated your child to the Lord, don't be moved by what it looks like. God got them. God got them. He will raise them up. They will fulfill the will of God for their life. They can act like a hellion if they want to, but I tell you, when you dedicate them to the Lord, they might run, but they can't hide. God will find them. Look no further for encouragement to walk in the grace of God. The Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app provides rewarding content that is sure to nourish your mind and soul. Treat yourself to enriching messages from Pastor Dollar on grace and walking in the likeness of Christ. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app to stream messages of hope, grace, and understanding when you need them most. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. If you have your Bibles, Go with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 12. Today, we celebrate the wonderful gift of motherhood and the important role that mothers play in our lives. It's a day to honor and to show appreciation to our mothers for all that they have done and all that they continue to do for us. In today's message, I want to explore the biblical basis for honoring our mothers and the importance of respecting them. The Bible teaches us that we should honor our mothers. And in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, he says, Honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So this commandment under the law is not only a moral obligation, but it also comes with the promise of blessings. Uh, in, under the law, when this commandment was given, it was the only one that had with it blessings. God promises long life to those who honor their parents, and honor is defined as showing esteem for one or the one who deserves it, showing esteem. It, it's a word that means to show respect, to give attention to. The word even goes so far as to say when you honor somebody, you, you, you give them priority above everything else. You give them a place of priority and a place of value. So honor is, is serious business. Now, traditionally, to show you how serious honor was, there was such punishment that was dealt to children, adult children mostly, who would not walk in the honor of a mother or a father, what they would do back in the day <laughs> is that the whole neighborhood, like if you lived in the neighborhood, the whole neighborhood would come and get that dishonorable child, and they would drag them to the front of the neighborhood, and all of the neighbors would stone the child to death. Thank God we're not under the law. There'd be some stoning going on right now. Thank God we're not under the law, but this is just to show you how serious it was. 
Look at Matthew 15 and 4, just standing in this vein to show you how serious it was and then show you how things uh, have been adjusted a little bit. Matthew 15, 4, For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth, not cussing, but he that curses the father or mother, let him die the death. I'm like, whoa. In any dispensation, this would be serious. And then Proverbs chapter 30, verse 17, look at this. Proverbs 30 and 17, he says, The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall, shall pick it out, and the young e eagle shall eat it. Dang. <laughs> it was serious business, right? The way we respect our parents says a lot about how we respect God. That's why it was so serious. The way we respect our parents, especially our mothers, says a lot about how we respect God. And it was so serious back then because the actions of dishonor disrupted family multiplication and expansion. And so, unfortunately, the reality is that not all parents treat their children well. We understand that. Sometimes parents' behavior can be unhealthy and harmful to their kids. We understand that. But the Bible instructs us to honor our parents, but it does not command us to stay in harm's way. But the way those commandments to honor God, when you see those command to honor God or to honor your parents, most of that was aimed at adult children and not so much young children. Young children, most of that is like obeying your, 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 your mother and father as a kid. But we're talking about them grown-up children now. He said there's a level of honor that you should walk in and understand that you should do this until your parents leave the earth. In some nations of the world, you would receive a seven-prison, a seven-year prison term for being unemployed too long and not taking care of your parents. Might ought to bring that law on over here. <laughs> Let's give some examples. Throughout the Bible, there are many examples of mothers who placed important roles in their lives, in the lives of their children. One of those examples is a woman by the name of Hannah. Hannah was the mother of Samuel. And in Samuel chapter 1, you can read that, uh, it, it talks about Hannah prayed for a child and how God answered her prayer by giving her a son. And then Hannah dedicated Samuel to the Lord and raised him up to become a great prophet. So Hannah's example teaches us the importance of prayer and dedication in the area of motherhood. She prayed for a child and dedicated that child to the Lord. And let me say this to every mother. If you have dedicated your children to the Lord, you should not be carrying that care to bed every night. God got them. I said if you've dedicated your child to the Lord, don't be moved by what it looks like. God got them. God got them. He will raise them up. They will fulfill the will of God for their life. They can act like a hellion if they want to, but I tell you, when you dedicate them to the Lord, they might run, but they can't hide. God will find them. You're going to be all right. And don't let, don't let, don't let, uh, don't let your children shame you as a mother. Don't let them shame you. Well, you should have did that. You should have did that. Hold up. Put a little pen there. Now, go have your baby and then come back and talk to me later. <laughs> you've done, you've done all, you, you did all you knew to do for the time. All right? Somebody said, was it enough? Yes, it was enough because Jesus has committed 
to continuous education. You do what you know to do, and then you dedicate, you dedicate them to the Lord. You give them to God and let God do whatever you didn't do. And when they pull that stuff out about you didn't, you didn't do this and you didn't do that and you didn't do that, you just say, you know what, did all I needed to do, but now this is why you need to get saved so that Jesus can finish the work. But don't you walk around in shame. Isn't it amazing how they can tell you how you ought to be a parent? And ain't got child, ain't got child yet. You, the, the carrying a child for nine months and then birthing the child out of your body, put, spitting out a whole human being. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you, if it was up to men to have babies, the earth would be empty. <laughs> Oh, no, why are they trying to do this campaign about men can have babies too? What man want to do that? <laughs> you know how much courage it takes? Well, a woman's, ad I don't care how adaptable your body is, that thing hurt. That hurt. Every child ought to be apologizing to his mama. Mama, I'm sorry. <laughs> and if you got a big head, you need to get on your knees and apologize. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, it's just... <laughs> Another example is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Think of that. The mother of Jesus was chosen by God to be the mother of our Savior, and she accepted this calling with humility and obedience. And Mary's example teaches us the importance of obedience and trust in God's plan for our lives. I mean, what are you going to teach God? I've got to trust him. And so there's some practical things I want to bring to your attention today, some practical things that you can do to show honor to your mother. You know, normally I would take the attitude of, you know, it depends on what the series we're on. Oh, uh, well, you know, we'll just celebrate Mother's Day and then I'm going to just pick up preaching for where I am. But I'm realizing the older I get, it is important to, to single these precious celebrations aside. You need to be appreciated. You need to be celebrated. And your church needs to get behind the celebration to value motherhood. And so some practical ways to show it. Number one, make your mother look good. Somebody said, how you do that? By simply being a good person. Don't, don't be out there acting crazy and, and make, embarrassing your mama. Make your mother look good. People will make the connection. Make her look good. Make her smile. You know, it used to be some folks would hold up and say, I'm not going to do that. Why? My mama. There's some basketball players on, 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 on TV when they're playing basketball would go crazy, but they think, mama, 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 mama gonna call me. Don't embarrass me. You remember when you, I never could remember this. You remember when your mama say, boy, uh, you got them underwear on, they got holes all in it. What if you got to go to the hospital and you got them things on embarrassing me? <laughs> never could get that, but make her look good. <laughs> Number two. Let them know you understand what you have, what they have done for you. Pick a time where you, you understand, I know what you've you done for me, Mom. I know you've been praying for me every day. I know that, and I thank you. If there's an area that you become aware of, let them know, I know, and I thank you. I know you've been patient with me, and I thank you. I know I disappointed you here but you didn't give up on me, and I thank you. Number three, provide the gift of your presence. Provide the gift of your presence by visiting and listening to their stories. You, 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 you'll learn something. <laughs> I, I was with my, my family a couple of weeks ago, and I learned a lot. I walked out of the house, I said, God, dog, I learned a lot. <laughs> the gift of your presence. Number four, 
And here's a big one. You honor them by not expecting them to bail you out. Uh-oh, been funny so far. <laughs> Work hard to avoid dishonoring your parents by looking for, uh, by not looking for a bailout. Work hard to avoid dishonoring your parents. Like it or not, your debt reflects negatively on them. Think about that now. Hey, what you going to do when they leave? You ain't got your stuff together yet that you're still going to your mama to bail you out? Yeah, mama, I know, but, 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 but get your butt out of the way and figure out how to live a life where you will stop trying to buy stuff to impress somebody who don't care and putting it, putting it on your mother. That's dishonorable. They spent all their life raising you. Seem like it's your time to give back to one who has given so much to you. Number five, it got quiet in here on that one, didn't it? <laughs> Don't be, wait <laughs> Don't be waiting for your mama to die for your prosperity. Y'all, you, you, you act like you don't understand what I'm saying. I tell my kids, don't, don't be waiting for me to, and your mama to die and for you to prosper. We try not to leave nothing. <laughs> We're trying to spend every dime. We're not... That's why I don't want you to make, make me no soup right now, because you, you too, you're too excited about <laughs> You better get a job. You better figure out how to prosper on your own. Don't figure out. You might be, you might be tricked. You might be expecting something that ain't going to be there when I'm leaving. <laughs> Amen. I think this is number five. Pick up the tab once in a while. It means the world to your mom when you at least try. All your life you've gone out somewhere and she's always picked the tab up and paid it. You pick it up. You've grown. You're an adult. When you take your mom out somewhere, pick the tab up. Don't be looking at her and say, well, uh. <laughs> I would pay for it, but I ain't got but $5. Well, why you ask her out? You're going to ask her out and then look for her to pick the tab up. That's dishonorable. That's not honorable. If you can't afford to go to a restaurant, invite her over and cook. And if you can't cook, ask somebody in your relatives that can cook. But don't do that. Number six. I mean, I like the way Taffy did. Boy, Taffy, like, she get up, look around, she say, you pay this. <laughs> and they look like, uh-huh. Huh, you pay this. I'm waiting in the car. Because <laughs> I ain't going back to the kitchen and washing no dishes. You, if any, you're going to wash the dishes. That's, it's, it's dishonorable for that. Number six, show a positive regard for parents through your words and your behaviors. A regard for them. I regard my mother through my words and my behavior. Number seven, in the Old Testament, grown children would provide care, they would provide time, and they would provide financial support if needed. This was the culture's version of Social Security. They didn't have it back then. And there are some adult children who just look to take the Social Security from. El elderly people are not being honored in this country the way that they should be honored. <laughs> and it, it's something we have to change. There is no way 
Your mom ought to be working on her third retirement because you can't seem to get it together. And a word of advice to, your mo to, to mothers, don't be going in and rescuing a grown man who ought to be, he, he 50 years old, don't be going in and rescuing him. Well, I'm a mama. I just don't want him to be homeless. Let that butt uh, sleep outside a couple of times on the curb. He'll be, he'll be a lot, lot thankful for whatever job he can get to do what needs to be done. And like I'm telling you, it's not hard. It's an it's a issue of mathematics. How you want to live and how much you making. It's real simple. Now, when you look at how much you want to live and it costs this much, and you look at how much you're making and you're making this much, what you're making is not enough to take care of how you're living. So you're going to have to either reduce how you're living or increase how much you're making. It's real simple. You know, it, it, it don't even take the Holy Ghost helping you to figure that out. That's simple math. That means you can't live in an apartment that costs $3,000 a month and you ain't making but $1,200 a month. Well, where you gonna live at at that price? I don't know, you might have to rent a room or buy a tent, but that's your problem. You gotta figure that out. I'm too real, I need to go and hurry up with this sermon. <laughs> Number eight, they refrain from dishonoring their parents. You have to refrain from dishonoring your parents, and they're for, they're, they're, let me give you a couple of ways to, to do that. If you, you will honor them by refraining from dishonoring them. In other words, to treat your mom, number one, as if she is insignificant is dishonoring. They get no honor if you treat her like she is insignificant. That's dishonorable. Number two, second part of this, to strike, hit, abuse, or be cruel to your mother is dishonoring. It, it is a dishonoring thing, but I have counseled people who have come to me because their children are striking them, hitting them. I, I know you think it's ridiculous, but there, there are mothers who are being physically abused by their children. That's so dishonoring. The next one, to curse your mother, not cuss her. That's not good either. But to curse your mother is like pronouncing condemnation and wishing some sort of evil would harm, would, uh, would harm or destroy them. It's literally cursing her with the words of your mouth, wishing something ill that would come upon them. That acts like a boomerang, and it actually comes back on you. The day that we have chosen to celebrate and to honor our mothers, it is a serious occasion, more serious than what I've ever thought it was. It is an occasion that we all have an opportunity to evaluate just where we are, not to promote fear and say to you, well, you know, if you've done any of these things, you're going to hell. No, there's a, there's a grace that's available to help you to improve no matter where you are today. And God loves you, but you can't do no better until you know better. And maybe by bringing some things to your attention, we can promote a community that brings honor, recognition, and value to mothers that are getting older, that we respect them and honor them and love them and do all kinds of things that we can make their latter days much better than their former days. What does God have to say about the relationship between mothers and children? In the two-part series, A Mother's Love, Creflo and Taffy Dollar uncover not only how to be a godly parent, but how to honor our mothers within the context of grace. By honoring our mothers, we are not only pleasing God, but we are also setting ourselves up for blessings in our own life, so it's twofold. Jesus comes with grace. 
He comes with truth. And we no longer believe the lies of what motherhood is based on the world and the world's system and the world's way of loving, the world's conditions. But we tap into that supernatural ability that gives us the grace to love unto the end. For a love gift of only 15 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or 25 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs, you can secure your copy now. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit www.creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. Discover godly motherhood today. Mark your calendars now to join Creflo and Taffy Dollar for a three-day life-changing celebration, July 11th through 13th at World Changers Church International for our annual Grace Life Conference. We're kicking off this year's conference with inspirational singer and songwriter, Doe Jones. There's something for everyone, men, women, ministers, and leaders, plus loads of fun-filled activities for your children and teens that will leave them with a deeper understanding of God's grace and empowered to lead the next generation. General session times are 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Ministers and leaders don't miss the 5 p.m. just for you. These powerful sessions are designed to uplift your spirit and transform your life. Spend the afternoons visiting the nearby attractions and create memories that will last a lifetime. It's a joyful celebration of faith, fellowship, and fun. Don't miss our biggest event of the summer. Text Grace Life one word to 51555 and register today. Have you ever wondered how the financial support from our viewers makes a difference in people's lives? We receive testimonies every day from people whose lives have been shattered by natural disasters, failed marriages, bankrupt businesses, and so on. They share how our outreach efforts and messages about God's grace have changed their lives in a tangible way. And for that, we give God all the glory. Today, I invite you to prayerfully consider financially supporting this ministry. We know you'll be empowered to see real change in others and prosper in your own life. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Salvation is the beginning of a new life for a believer. It is from this point that we can move into the fullness of who God has called us to be and see the manifestation of the finished works of Jesus. It is one of my greatest pleasures to help people uh, to understand who Christ is and to lead people to Christ. If you would like salvation today, pray this prayer with me, very simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died, that he rose again, and that he lives today. Come into my life, save me. I receive you as my savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you pray that prayer with me, that's how simple it is. Welcome to the family of God. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.